Have you ever been in the situation where you've got so much to do and you really want to do a good job and you want to hit all of these goals, but you just don't have your mojo? You, you just lost your motivation to do any of it or all of it and you can't seem to get yourself out of the funk. I don't know about you, but during this whole intense COVID-19 that we're going through, it's been a little bit harder to get our mojo back, to actually get going and doing what we want to do. I think a lot of it has to do with the isolation many of us feel. So in this episode, I'm going to share with you seven tips and seven ways you can get your business mojo back. Are you ready to get started? I know I am. Episode 243 starts right now. Welcome to the Laura Shipman Show minicast, a special edition of my podcast where it's just you, me, my mic, your earphones, plus quick tips and hacks you can implement immediately to improve your life and your business. Are you ready to get started? I know I am. Let's dive in. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I am so glad you are here with me today because it is my favorite day of the week, and that is minicast day. And if you haven't been here for a minicast, where have you been, my friend? I have missed you, but I am so glad you found us today. So minicasts are these fun little episodes that I've created where I provide actionable tips and information to make not only your work better, but your life better. And today we're talking about work and life, right? Have you ever been in that situation where you've been really productive for so long and you're really jazzed about your business, but then all of a sudden it's like someone popped that balloon and you're not even sure what popped it? but you just don't have that passion anymore and it's hard to get back. And that happens. It happens to all of us at some point or another. And sometimes it's really hard to get back into that groove. So if you've ever suffered like that before, I have seven tips that I use to help me get my business mojo back. And I thought, well, you know, why don't I go ahead and share that with my mini cast fans, because I know we have all been there. And when you're in there, like I said, it's hard to get out. And the quicker you can get out and back into your mojo state, the better off you and your business will be. All right. So let's just dive right in. The first thing that really helps me when I'm feeling this way and tense, I tend to feel like sluggish and like nothing excites me, or I just don't have interest anymore. One of the things that helps me get past that or get over that is to just start, like just to focus and start. And so what I'll do is I will shut down everything, like all my notifications, make it quiet so that I have to focus on what I'm working on. And that helps. Sometimes that starting point is all it really takes. And then you can get into that workflow. So once I start, or actually even before I start, I actually set myself up to be successful in just starting. And what I'll do is I'll get myself in a mindset of where I'm just going to work for 25 minutes. And I think I've talked about this before on the show. I like to use the Pomodoro technique. It's a technique where you work in little short sprints, but after the sprint is over, you take a rest or a break and you get up and remove yourself from your workplace situation. So what I usually do before I actually just start is I might set a 25 minute timer. So my brain and my body knows all I need to do is just stick it out for 25 minutes and then I get a break. And that forces me just to be a little bit more focused and helps me stay on track and in the mode to get things done. The third thing that I love to help me stay on track are lists and post-it notes. So if you know me really well, you know that I love my little notebooks. As I'm sitting here at my desk recording this podcast, I see one, two, three, four, five, six little notebooks that I have. Each one of them are used for different things. So they're not all to-do lists. Some of them are journals. Some of them are brainstorm journals, things like that. But what I love to do to help me stay focused is I have one list that's a master running to-do list. And then what I'll do is I'll take a post-it note or sometimes an index card And for the day, so let's say it's Wednesday today, I will pull an index card or a post-it note and I'll just write down three things that I want to, want to, want to get done for that day. And I'll focus on those three things and I'll feel really good if I can accomplish those three things because then I know I'm moving myself just a little bit closer to the goal that 
I am after. So think in terms of that way. Like sometimes I think we get overwhelmed by our to-do list because it can be so big and long if we just break it down into little snackable chunks that we can really complete, we will feel so much productive and so much better about ourselves. So actually leaning into this one, this next one is cut the overwhelm. Number four is just cut the overwhelm. Sometimes I think we make our lives a little bit too complicated and we do that by saying yes to everything. So some of the things that I do to cut down on the overwhelm will be to turn off notifications and especially email because as many people have said, email tends to be other people's priorities, not your priority because they're pinging you, wanting you to do something. So I've gotten really good at not checking email every time I hear a ding. And as a matter of fact, I turn off those dings. So I have no notifications that fly across my laptop screen because if I did, I would be constantly distracted. One of the things that I do to minimize that overwhelm feeling is to first off declutter. I love to have a very clean desk. I don't like a lot of piles and things around me because that just stresses me out. And it's stuff, if I see piles and things that are just sitting on my desk that haven't been tended to, that's almost like a visual to-do list because every little pile or piece of paper that's sitting there is probably sitting there because action needs to be taken with it. So what I try and do is only touch paper once and then get rid of it, either file it or throw it away. The second thing I do is I'll take a look at my workflow and my processes and all the things that I think are important for me to be doing in my business and really take a look at them and see if they in fact are important. Sometimes they may not be. And so then I cut things like if they're not serving me or my audience or my business and I'm doing it just because I think that's the right thing to do because everybody else or the gurus and the experts are doing it. I stopped that. I quit doing that because I think it's more important for me to stay focused on what my audience and my business truly needs. And once I'm staying focused like that, I tend to be happier and more passionate about what I'm doing. Okay, my next tip, tip number five, is get outside. I cannot start my workday unless I go for my three and a half mile walk. I just can't. I get very edgy and irritable if I don't do it. And then I even find myself throughout the day, if I've been sitting at my desk for a very long time, I need to stop and get outside. So being outside, I think is really important. And I know some people who are living in the North where the weather isn't as good, it can be a little bit more difficult. And if that's the case, do something where you move yourself to a window where you can see the outside or feel the sun through the window on your face so that you get in touch with nature a little bit. That does so much, I think, for our brains and our soul. So do whatever you can to get outside and actually get some movement going. Because when you do move, your brain moves and you feel more energized and that mojo tends to come back. Okay, tips number six and seven go hand in hand. It's podcasts and reading. I love listening to podcasts that really help me with productivity, time management, passion, um, inspiration, all of that stuff. So I find some people that I really like to listen to who are very motivating, and I let that play in my head first thing in the morning during my walks, and I'll listen to those things. And it really changes my outlook on the day is if I can get that juice, that really good mojo juice first thing in the day, it'll carry me throughout the day. And then number seven is reading. And actually I listen to Audible. I am so glad this is not by any means um, sponsored by Audible, but Audible, if you're listening, that'd be nice. I love Audible. It was a Christmas gift I gave to myself and I'm glad that I did that because I'm able to grab those books that I've always been wanting to read and listen to them on my walk. And again, they're the type of books that are motivating, they're um, business oriented, they're self-development oriented, and they just really help me get in that positive flow state. Now, if there's a bonus tip that I could give you, that would be start something new, something that really excites you. Because sometimes when we get stuck in a rut and we're going through the day to day and we're staying consistent in our business. And that's what the majority of the battle of business is, is just to stay consistent. It can get tedious. And so sometimes I will start something new, a new project that kind of lights my fire 
within my business. And that gives me more creative thoughts and ideas and helps me feel really motivated to do more for my business. So those were my, I guess, eight tips of how to get your mojo back when you're just not feeling it anymore. I would be interested to hear from you. What is it that you do to get your mojo back? What really fuels you, lights you up, um, gets that fire in your belly just going to help you stay like at high level. I would love to hear what that is. So here's how you can tell me what that is. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this podcast episode, throw it up in your Instagram stories, tell me what your tip is, and then tag me in it so I don't miss it because I would love to hear. I love this kind of stuff. I'm kind of like a geek when it comes to motivational self-development stuff. I love it. I could just eat it up all day. Anyways, well, that is it for today. So now you have a job to do. You listen to this mini cast. Now you have to take action. If you're struggling in the mojo department, go ahead and take action and use one or all of these tips to help you get your mojo back. All right, my friend. Thanks again for tuning in today and you know what to do. Stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay social. Hey, before you go, I have a question for you. Are you loving the show? Let me know about it. Take a screenshot of the episode you are listening to and drop it in your social media posts or stories, or better yet, give this show a review on iTunes or your favorite podcast app, letting me know that you listened in. If you have a topic or show idea, please don't be shy. I want to hear from you. Send me an email or a DM. I would love to hear your suggestions. All the links are in the show notes. Anyways, I just wanted to say thank you as always for tuning into the show today and every day you listen in.